Hi, everyone. Uh, today I have Bill on the line. Uh, Bill, I want you to go ahead and introduce yourself to my uh, the audience. Uh, hello, this is Bill Milnazic. Uh, my company is Axis Visual. Uh, we perform uh, graphic design and marketing services for um, mainly small to mid-sized companies, uh, essentially building the visual face that they present to their client base. You say building the visual face. Uh, just kind of explain that a little bit just so that someone doesn't understand. It's not. Sure, yeah. sure. Um, companies usually do what they do really well, but they usually don't talk about their business to their client base as well. Um, so what we do is essentially with a um, number of years experience uh, in, in this business as well as um, a lot across disciplines with different types of businesses, the, it might be something like um, a logo or a website or a brochure, advertisement, trade show materials, anything visual. So that's the face that they will then present forward to their client base. Now what we do is, is tailor it so it's the most effective. It's, um, there's a lot of competition out there for, for design and marketing and so what we can do that will make a company most visible is then going to help them in the long run. Okay, and so uh, I know in, in the email you sent me something about how you started out by, first of all, you know, there's two sides of the story of you branding yourself and also mm -hmm. how you now also brand uh, companies. So let's start from how you started out, you know, your history of how you got started in the business and how you got to the point where you started branding yourself in the business. Okay, okay. Well, it's, um, I don't want to go back too far, but uh, both my parents were, uh, my father did the same did the same business, uh, business in his field. Uh, I kind of went through art school and had an interest in design and marketing for, for businesses. Uh, I spent uh, about 17 years working for uh, another company, and then 13 years ago I started working, started my, opened up my own company, Access Visual. And... Um, with the with the with the idea of having a more of a, a wide variety of experiences and client types, um, but also bringing really kind of um, tailored communications at a, at a smaller budget. Really, I don't have uh, being a small. I I am also an entrepreneur in a small business, so yeah. I'm aware of that. So I try and keep uh, essentially the way I phrase it is agency experience at a studio price. Okay. So that's kind of kind of what I do. I've, uh, in my 13 years in business, I've had um, a lot of different types of clients. Uh, being in the Philadelphia area, you can't you can't be here and not work somewhat in the uh, pharmaceutical and <laughs> yeah. uh, area. But uh, I've done a lot of other things as well. And, and personally, I love variety. I love sort of wrapping my brain around uh, other demands that different uh, companies present. So when you when you get a client, what 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 is the typical? Uh What's the process? I walk into your office, try and figure out, okay, how can you uh, help me present myself mm -hmm. visually to my client? What, what's mm -hmm. the process you go through with, 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 with any new client? Well, the first process is always an interview process, and it makes on both sides. They, they um, interview me, and I interview them, and we both want to make sure that we feel comfortable with each other. Um, my goal is to get not, not just... Uh, a, a um, understanding of their business, but also an understanding of them personally. Because if they're the decision maker, what I do is uh, is essentially bringing a visual creativity to um, to the task of marketing. That's very personal, so, so I kind of have to work out what I think is best for the company, and also talk to them as an individual and find out kind of what I've, I've talked to some. Actually, I was talking to somebody earlier today about this. What I refer to is their creative risk tolerance. So, you know, it's a kind of a funny little phrase, but it's very effective because if they're if they're risk averse, they're going to want to be very conservative. Now, that may not be right for their particular area of business, or it may be perfect for their area of business. It depends. Um, but it's you know, it's something that their personal acceptance of a bold creative statement. That comes into play too. So I kind of weigh out, uh, you know, the business, the clients, um, their personal, they or what, whoever the decision makers are um, in their business, and, and through that, then we'll talk a little further. I present a, an estimate on the project, and uh, if they want to move forward, we move forward. Okay. So um, you said that you always find a way how risk adverse they are. I, I mean, what, can you give an example of maybe a situation where someone came and wanted to do something very conservative? And mm -hmm. you had an idea that trying to you know, push them into something that was a little bit more risk averse and turned out, uh, you know, better than they expected. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's something that that um, 
oftentimes happens, but it's also you know what my my role in the first uh, in the first interview and in finding out where they are doesn't necessarily absolutely direct me, but it's another piece of the puzzle. So when I find out how risk averse they are, um, you know, I, I may show I may show one solution. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Traditionally, normally when I, I come back with multiple solutions, and then we'll talk about them and we'll may may adjust them and so forth. So it becomes more of an interactive process. The client is really part of the part of the. The solution here as well, um, but um, you know, I may show some that are further, that are more adventurous, and I, you know, and just for example, maybe I feel it's much more effective too. So I'll, I'll talk and I'll tell them why. Um, in the end, it really is, you know, I can't. Um, I certainly have my my opinions and my feelings about it, but it is like any service business. I'm performing a service for a com for another company, and they have to feel comfortable with it. So, I will uh, I'll absolutely tell them the whys and the wherefores of why I think a solution is best. But the bottom line is they have to be comfortable with it too, because that's that's part of the the personality that they're projecting forward with their company. Oh yes, yes, and, and one of the things that I, uh, stood out to me was in the email you said you know this whole social buzz, uh, social media buzz thing is you know there is. Uh, I wanted you going back into that statement where you said um, you know people shouldn't get carried away by the whole social media thing, but there is something specific that you need to focus on in every business when it comes down to to marketing to your clients. And mm -hmm. what are those things that you feel, regardless of social media, what are those key things that you feel that every business owner needs to focus on? when it comes to marketing to their clients or maybe educating their clients on the needs for their services? Mm -hmm. Well, bi different businesses have different equations of, of what's right. Um, and, you know, I I have uh, experience in, in some areas, and I think some areas, if I, once again, if I, if I interview the business, I'll, I'll, there'll be areas that I think will, will be best. Um, the social media area, I think, is kind of funny right now, actually, because it's getting all kinds of buzz, and it's, people think it's the, the, the savior, and that all you have to do is social media, and your business will be perfect. Yeah. Um, there are certain businesses that it helps, and there are certain that it's less effective. Uh, business to business marketing is less effective there. Um, Com consumer marketing, depending on the product, it might be more effective. Mm -hmm. So it, that that comes into play. I mean, if you're, you have to think about who's the decision maker, who's buying your product, okay. and what is their, how do they spend their time? I mean, uh, if if you're pitching to uh, a C level uh, company, um, you know, a CEO or something in that area, well, they're not sitting there watching, listening you know, on Twitter all day long. Yes. So you know, versus somebody maybe who is you know you want to market uh, somebody in a I don't know a coffee shop or something other that might be a more applicable approach for that. So I don't mean to I don't mean to dismiss it completely, but I just think it's getting a lot more uh, hype now than than it warrants for a lot of businesses. Um, I also think it's going to be very interesting as it plays out in the future because it's an area that is getting saturated really, really, really quickly. quickly. Yes, yes. So if you think about how many emails that you don't read a day, <laughs> you know how many you know. So there's more and more avenues where where things are coming at us as as consumers, and we're, we're putting up walls to stop them. So. You know, the uh, the social media is another one that I think is getting very saturated very quickly, and people are just going to start to put the wall up and say, you know, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to get any more information from from this or that or the other thing. So, you know, is it valuable? Yes, and I think it's worth exploring. I think it's depending on what it is. Sometimes you can create a buzz or. Um, you know, for example, some of the viral uh, videos up on, on um, YouTube, they're really bold statements. So if you want to if you want to do that, you got to really be bold with it. Um, you know, in order to make a mark and create a little bit of a buzz that way. So there's the, there is value, but I think you know, once again, you have to look at who is the audience that that's going to be buying your product or service, and how do we get to them? Uh, my feeling, and you know, granted, this is also because it's my area of, of expertise. Um, a good, a good, solid visual brand for a company is critical. That's as critical as anything else because that's the the signature that people see. That's the the logo, the the color, the layout, the whatever it is. That's the visual presence that a company brings forward that immediately gives a a, a um, an impression of 
is professional or it's not professional. It's a, a company I can trust or it's too crazy or, you know, there's all these things delivered. So that's, that's an area that I think is important. Um, and then there's also, there's areas like uh, PR and uh, social media, as I said, and, uh, you know, in terms of uh, one of the things actually I was writing before we got online here. Um, you know, there's some of the other things are getting, you know, uh, networking events. I just came back from one today. Okay. And they're, they're valuable too. So as a small business, you have to do all of them to some degree. Mm -hmm. And the difficulty is not to get too swept up into any one where you're, you're letting the others fall. Because as you do them all, you'll kind of find out which ones yield the best results. And like I said, each company is different. So, um, you know, one company that does well in social media might do hard, another one might do horribly. So it's, it's something that as a small business, you kind of have to explore a lot of different things, talk to a lot of different people, and then see what the results are. And, and when you say the results, like, uh, how exactly, I mean, when you're doing all these different things you're talking about, how, how do you help your clients track the results? Because I'm sure that's something that they might have uh, questions as, okay, how am I sure that this what you're doing is giving me this mm -hmm. output? So how do you go about tracking that kind of results for them? A small a small business owner for for a small business owner that's very difficult. Okay. Uh, you have companies like Coca Cola or you know of that scale. They they pay all kinds of money to do all kinds of tracking and and they can figure that out. But for a small company, it's an expensive process. Um, somewhat, if you're on the on the, on the web front, you can do. Excuse me, you can do tracking where if you create another web page and you direct whatever you're doing, directs all your your clients to that one new page, and that's there, there's your portal, and you can measure that. You can go online and see how many viewers you have on that page. So there's a way to do that if you want to set that up. Okay. So the web base has a little bit more trackable. It doesn't necessarily guarantee sales. Yeah. You know, and you'd have to set up more of an infrastructure to, to measure that. Um, one of the things that, that I saw for years in my career is, is that um, advertising was, uh, you know, companies would say, well, how, how was that going to improve my profits? How is this layout going to improve better than that layout? Mm -hmm. And that's a really, really difficult thing. It can be done. It can be measured, but it's a very expensive thing to measure because you need focus groups and you got to, you know, bring a, lot, a whole lot of, um, you know, research and, and people into to conduct or, uh, to conduct these focus groups, okay. uh, and that'll give you a fairly good idea of what the what the bottom line is. But still, it's you know most small companies can't afford that kind of that kind of cost, so they have to. My suggestion would be go with go with people you trust, and then you know, and then be be you know observe observe what what that does to business. Um, Everybody, particularly in a bad economy, everybody wants the silver bullet, the one magic thing. What one thing can I do? Yeah. Uh, and unfortunately, there isn't one. And if anybody tells you there is, <laughs> yeah. they're trying to sell their thing. Yeah. You know, so so it's, there's, it really is a lot of different different pieces to it. Um, you know, I, I wish there I wish there was one thing that suddenly was just perfect for business and I could you know sell that. You know, go go that route. But. So, as a small business owner, and that's a good point you make, uh, mentioned about the economy right now. So, as a small business owner who's trying to get this, you know, the, the, the brand of the company out there, uh, so what steps would you say they should take uh, to, to, to to do that? 